What's up guys? This is the Braverman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Dead War. Let's play as the Pirates. So to pick up where we left off last time, uh, as you can see we are pushing this force under James Dampy North to attack Santa Fe because the garrison is actually significantly uh, stronger than we were expecting. So let's attack this force that's been pushed out of the city to intercept us. So we want to attack this city, push on, take Santa Fe, re structure our force to then drive east and uh, just pretty much have a jolly good time against the Pueblo Nations and Louisiana. We're probably going to avoid the, Bla the uh, Plains Nations people to the north. Okay, so drop my guns behind the lines, my pirate batteries. Deploy some militia. There's a couple of militia units that are going to hold back on the flanks and deploy if necessary. Let's put our buccaneers including a rifleman's shanty on either flank. General in the centre. Good. So there is an enemy mounted contingent to be concerned about, but I'm not overly worried because my guns can do a certain amount of damage there. Actually, I think I might have been a bit overconfident pushing so many of my pirates out on the flanks. My militia need to run. So I think they all need to run. We're actually a bit out of position here. Gunners are just going to town on the tribal auxiliary. Great hits. Who knew the pirate 12 pounders would be so... Aha! I spy mateys. We have to charge the native auxiliary, lest they charge us first. Get these buccaneers to enter the fray. New men push the flank, let's get more buccaneers to move up quickly. Mr. Dampy, get up front. Yeah, I, I, I was not expecting. Okay, pirates charge. You guys both charge the native troops. Get my colonial militia to surround the native position themselves. Yeah, there's a militia unit breaking, understandably. You men charge the general's bodyguard. You men keep pushing to the rear. I think what's happening is that we're getting their archers are actually causing a bit of havoc. There we go, so let's bring these pirates in sweeping in from the north. You men hit that native bowmen, my all of my guns are doing great work, but not necessarily on the targets I'm most interested in, so I might actually cease fire. Might get James Dampy involved as well. Against this regiment of foot. Suspiciously quiet battlefield. So my generals got involved fighting against the native auxiliary here. The rest of the native contingents are being engulfed. So all of you except my general. Push on into the native bowmen. He, actually, he's going to do the same. Okay, let's send a blob to attack the bowmen here. My general is going to smash into this force here. All my artillery to the rear. Continue engaging the tribal auxiliary. Okay, 
get everyone involved. This has become a a brawl, not a battle. Dispatch one unit to attack the general's bodyguard. Colonial militia are doing some good work. The general's bodyguard. Actually, let's swing, swing them around to the north. There you go. Bring in more pirate mateys charging in. The guns in the rear that aren't just not really doing anything. I say not doing anything, they're bombarding my own lines. You want to attack the native auxiliary? That's a good shot there. Charge into the back of this unit here. There we go. Native unit dispatched just with sheer overwhelming force from blackguards and scum and villainy. Nice. So that force has been chewed up. Push you guys back towards Santa Fe. Mr. Dampy can replenish, and then we're going to take the second Lightfoot and rename them Millwall fans. <laughs> there you go. That's full finger name request. So get you guys to advance up towards Santa Fe. This force here is nearly at full strength. Oh, it's the artillery they're waiting for. Yes, one turn, a couple of turns of recruitment. You're keeping an eye on Texas. Then up here in the Americas. To be honest, I might just keep recruiting Floyds. Because as we recruit troops here in Newfoundland, we're going to want to send them east to join our pirate detachments here in Reykjavik. So we are trying to expand our recruitment capacity here. And to be honest, I probably want to recruit some Jebex ready to try and intercept key ports around the British Isles before we launch our attack. In terms of research, actually, you should probably go for Carcass Shot. Although you were... Hmm. You were going for government by consent. But you should probably start trying to get carcass shot to get the gunnery school and try and advance down towards quick climb shells as quickly as possible. Both of our universities are being upgraded, I believe. I can't remember where the other one was, is it? Not Cuba. Where did I build my other university? I must be blind. I must really be blind. Oh, it was okay. I was looking like up here. Right, okay, yep. Yeah. So we're continuing our upgrades of the schools, which is great. We're 11 grand um, ready to rock and roll, but we're, we're still recruiting troops. I'm not going to go mad recruiting just yet. Let's hit in turn. Ooh, so it looks like. Spanish have taken Chicasa away from the Cherokee, which is good. I'm a bit nervous about fighting the Native American tribes because their military or their uh, melee fighting is particularly dangerous, especially if we can't recruit cavalry. That is definitely a concern. 13 colonies want peace. They're not going to get it because we want to continue raiding their trade lines. Trade lanes. Good amount of cash. You've gone for four field crop rotations, so and then you chaps probably advance towards. I mean, much syllabus doesn't do anything to us. Socket bayonets useful. Cadence. Lots of these military techs are indirectly useful for us, just not immediately handy. So maybe go for. I mean, you may as well go for military syllabus because square formation. Uh, give us more, more com high command rating. And I should probably go for military syllabus and try and get towards socket bayonet, and start to try and get cadence marching and other advanced techniques. Well, not advanced techniques, but things that may benefit our, uh, benefit our 
militia armies. So you're nearly in. You're nearly up to scratch. So you're going to be fully recruiting for this force here in Mexico now. You men continue to replenish. Advance up to Santa Fe. I mean, that's just going to be a swarm job. That's not going to be a an engagement. I mean, come on. We're just going to swarm them and take out the mortars. They didn't really have an army to fight. But let's keep upgrading Santa Fe. So this force, so once you guys attack Texas, this force is probably going to head east and attack Upper Louisiana at the same time we push and take Lower Louisiana, even though we're technically at peace with the Louisianans, that will change. So, let's get a sloop out of here. Get you men embarked. The reason why I'm sending a flight is so I can actually do something more useful with it afterwards. So you're still raiding that northern trade lane in Europe. So this force is ready. So let's march you down to the port all at the moment. You are... I mean, you're limited by how much you can recruit for now. James Dampier, frontiersman. Good stuff. And he's also a brave soldier. Good stuff. I definitely want him to be uh, involved. I would like him to be involved in the attack on... Um, England, but I don't think that's going to happen. In terms of income, we're starting to shrink down to 8,000 a turn. But I'm... Oh yeah, I forgot. Because we now have a European branch. Aha! We're going to have reduced taxes on the lower classes. Okay, they should love us. And the upper classes should also really like us as well, actually. Okay, so then turn. When those howitzers are up in position, we can then launch our attack against Texas. And then we can be ready to drive eastwards into southern uh, mainland USA. But let's see. Yeah, Hanover wants peace. They're not going to get it. Cherokee want peace. They're not going to get it. Württemberg still wants peace. They're not going to get it. Ha <laughs> You dogs. Okay, so now you've got the next government building. You should. Yeah, they'll now, they can now recruit two units at, at a time rather than just the one. So get you guys. We can get into Hoffen for now. You can also recruit howitzers, but get into. Get into Reykjavik. So right now you've got seven slots left. And you want two of those to be howitzers. Get two more buccaneers and another militia. But now Reykjavik is... No, it's a recruitment problem, not a population problem. George Bonney, you've arrived. Actually, you don't need those two pirates there. Although you are going to want to keep recruiting because we're probably going to need to keep dumping troops. Um, into Ireland. Just keep expanding. Yeah, you're slowed by what you can provide. And that's also a population issue. 179 people in Newfoundland and they're still earning a ludicrous amount of cash. And the growth is massive. <laughs> because there's a massive amount of emigration relative to the current population. Okay, so this army is growing... We're not going to push this turn. We might, have, we might have the legs. No, we don't. So let's upgrade this government building. Let's take James Dampy's pirate horde and get them up here onto the border with Upper Louisiana because that's when we can start to get into some trouble with these other factions. Maybe not Denmark, but definitely from the Cherokee and also from Spain. So much so, I'm going to send my agent up ahead to scout out what lies ahead of us there. Okay, let's upgrade. Oh yeah, we've got some... Uh, we can upgrade some farms due to getting full field crop, full field crop rotation, so I'm a bit behind there, but that's pretty 
useful for us because that will allow us to grow our towns a bit quicker. Well, I'm hoping. Oh no, there's not that much immigration from into the Bahamas. Yeah, yeah, Iceland's growing quite well from people on their way. Oh no, that okay. So immigration, that must be immigration away from Newfoundland, but they they're coming towards Iceland, which is pretty handy. So when we launch our attack on Britain, I want to try and occupy as many unoccupied ports as possible. Force Britain dis to disperse her forces. Actually, have they got no 13 colonies? Have they attacked Tunis? Oh, hello, there's another Mughal fleet. I'm, I'm pleased the numbers are going down. You know what? To be honest, I might just build. Because I'm starting to not necessarily run out of things to spend money on, but here, build a fortification. Then my navy's going to come out and attack Mr. Singh. Bring the fifth rate into our service. We likely lost the sloop. Oh no, the sloop's still here. See so men replenish. Again, we're quite low. 7,800 per turn. You keep marching. Because we're already at war with... Well, we're still at... Well, France doesn't exist, so Louisiana's looking quite alone. Your Majesty. Declare war on the Pueblo Nations. Dagestan's going to join them, but that's okay. God, power and wealth. Terrifying and spectacular. What? Okay. What? Uh... Oh, do you think it might be because I don't have allies? Can I not? Can I not declare war on people? I'm not. Okay, so do I have to? Do I have to wind them up? Make them declare war on me? That's really not ideal. Is it because I can't do? I can't conduct diplomatic actions. Right. Okay, so that blocks us from advancing through Louisiana because we can't declare war with them either. Nope, that's very not handy. Hmm. Well, instead, we're going to have to bring Mr. Dampy back and probably land somewhere like Florida, Savannah. Something like that, I would suppose. Hmm. Bit of a bummer, but... Not a lot we can do about that. Thank God we haven't declared peace with most any of the major nations. Still at war with all of the biggies in Europe. But you are getting ready. So you've got five more units you can you can receive, and that's probably going to be enough. But again, we want to keep recruiting because when we attack Britain, we're going to find ourselves fighting a proper army with proper technology, and it could get quite risky. But that's why I'm landing and attacking Dublin first, rather than going for London. No, Hanover. Definitely cannot go for peace now. No, 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 no. No, sir. Farms have been upgraded, and that also means you guys probably have to you're going to come down here and be picked up by a Floyd and deployed to attack Florida itself or siege Florida. Hmm. Not ideal. So then you guys can get two howitzers, two militia, and a buccaneer. And that's this army probably done as well. Who will also join that engagement. I mean, he could go... Right, peace with the Huron. He could, actually, send Mr. Dampy on a... No, that's silly. I've wasted a turn there as well. 
That's silly. Sending him up there because it's going to make him too isolated against too many other potential enemy nations. Much better to have him land here and push up the American coast from the south. It's the better decision. So Britain has taken Tunis, so we can't. We're not going to knock Britain out of the game by taking the British Isles. Bit of a bummer, but there we are. Two more turns though till this is done. Still recruiting our Jebek swarm, which are going to deploy from this port and raid as many um, enemy ports as possible. But yeah, the pirate campaign is is very restrictive in this way. In that now I can't declare war on those nations again because I can't participate in any diplomacy. That's that's a that's a bummer. That really is a bummer. So we've got military syllabus. So let's recruit the drill school. You chaps now can probably try and go for the flying shuttle. Again, we have no smith, so we can't build can't research basic steam pump even though we have a huge amount of mines classical universities have been built which is really good actually you guys might go on to division of labor get that boost in growth plus all our plantations could be upgraded you chaps have now made it to port so let's take mr montalban's force Sailing off the coast of St. Augustine. See who we're facing. Not anyone. There must be some troops in Savannah somewhere. The Floyd will soon expose that threat. Actually, let's bring the Floyd back to Veracruz, because next turn why not Yeah, next turn, three recruitment slots. This army will be finished. One more turn to your done. Then we can dispatch the fleet. <laughs> the fleet, quote unquote. Recruit a couple. Recruit one more, Jebek. Still got some reinforcements. It. Uh, actually, I'm just going to push you guys through Louisiana territory. If we're not, if we're through this territory and Louisiana, if we're not going to be able to make peace with them. Hit end turn. Keep my James Dampy advancing south. To be honest, he might be. I could intercept them, which I think I am going to. Yes. I want to do that because the enemy is in quite bad shape and I can actually ha fight a bit of a uh, conventional action here and that would cause the... Uh, that would cause the, the AI to uh, experience some attrition prior to taking the city, which will probably then fall to um, a, de a surrender demand. Let's advance a gun unit up to that point there. Let's keep... You're advancing up. Keep this gun team to the rear, firing from range. It's the first application of pirate howitzer fire. Let's put four units of militia on the left flank, but we will be advancing. Two are going to be in reserve on the right. I, fundamentally, this is going to be a... Just surround them with musketry engagement. A couple of reserves. Plus my commander. Let my howitzers engage as they wish. Huh. What an odd deployment. My pirates may not get as much utilization here as they may otherwise would. Simply because we have overwhelming way to fire with our militia anyway. Colonial line, colonial line, regiment marine grenadiers. Yes, yeah, Spain, I know you well. Actually, let's probably get a bit more aggressive with this. I 
mean, this colonial line, I wasn't really expecting, not, well, I'm not expecting much from them. So you guys pivot to engage the line infantry, you guys advance up rapidly, howitzers engage. Engage the colonial line on the right flank. Looks like the native line are about ready to go out to mischief. The pirates are advancing up the left flank, or the buccaneers are advancing. To be honest, explosive shell is not super useful. It's carcass shot. It's the, it's, you know, it's the the quick lime light, if you like. Okay, let's get my infantry to surround the enemy, my pirates. We're going to advance up towards the colonial infantry. You men are opening fire. Actually, you guys might... Ugh, they might charge the native auxiliary because they can actually win against militia one-on-one -on -one, because they really aren't that good. And they're causing more, uh, my chaps to get upset. So get my general up here, get my artillery firing shrapnel shot. Get my buccaneers to charge the line, then I can rapidly bring this militia detachment on the left flank over to the centre. There we go, pirates charging in. Yes, you Spanish colonials aren't enough to beat regular pirates. Okay, let my guys continue to advance as they're currently planning. This unit here shattered. Pirates on the move. You men advance up towards that militia. Conscript unit actually routed. You guys blast the native bowmen with shrapnel. The eleventh are routed. But hopefully the addition of the 7th, that should provide some supporting fire. As you can see, they're actually pretty... The bowmen are actually pretty potent. Oh, they're actually engaging the 7th instead. My pirates just to surround and attack that militia unit alone. Expecting those that militia unit to come back. Might expect the eleventh to come back, really. They're engaging to attack a oh they're actually gonna make my buccaneers route with a couple of from no because of the, their sheer tiredness. It's gotta be artillery shot screwing that up as well. Halt the guns. They might come back. Well, they should come back. They've only lost one man. I'm fairly sure it must be artillery fire. The officer's up front. The rest of their force has been nearly broken. New men charge the last colonial militia unit. Buccaneers have killed their general. 20th Lightfoot. I'm going to rename them. Halt my artillery fire. Pirates have hit the colonial militia. Bulk of the rest of the army. There we go. They come into the fight. Hmm. The militia units come back. Pirate ethos really should be to just continue to ch chase down these routing units just to prevent them from coming back. There we go. Here come the 20th. 
We've hit the Colonial, the 7th Regiment in the flank. Make sure to keep the attack order strong so when they break, we right click again to make sure they massacre as many troops that are within arm's reach. If they can reach them with a saber, I want them to die. Well, there we go, and they're going down pretty handsomely. These guys are a bit sturdier, but they're still going down to the 6th and the 4th. Look at this brave soul. He's not around for very much longer. How about this guy, towards the rear? Isolated, cut off from his mateys. See if he... Does he die or does he kill the enemy? It looks like he's probably going to survive because the 10th Regiment of Militia are already wavering. No! Damn it! You lost your mateys! Oh well. The 10th Regiment will soon be following them. There they go. And because my guys are light infantry, they will actually be able to outpace the militia. So they would naturally chase down and destroy every unit. Well, every man inside the unit, but... We're going to let it go. Take the victory, because it's already quite significant for us. Yeah, we are 600 men, which is quite a lot, but we killed 1,500 of theirs. And if we demand the surrender of St. Augustine, which should be definitely possible, considering the uh, territory is ungarrisoned, that will be a fortified settlement off of the coast. That we will have access to and we could potentially send a splinter force north to take savannah as well uh oh watch out floyd you're gonna get attacked by the 13 colonies yeah how about it fleet is lost. damn at least they were not captured but i think if we demand the surrender of charleston we could turn that governor's military governor's barracks to our advantage vehemently refuse to accept peace with anyone now we know how it screws us over okay so demand the surrender of st augustine prepare the governor's barracks take half my force oh no actually savannah is garrisoned but it's currently producing zero income okay so we're going to hold our ground then mateys we're not going to build any upgrades here Tis a recipe for disaster. Floyd was destroyed. This army is now ready. But let's pick up a Floyd to transport them. Probably to around about here to push up towards Chikasa. New port emerges in Guatemala. Congratulations, have a trade port. And then let's go to Veracruz and pick up an, a... Actually, let's go somewhere else to make sure we don't screw it up. Get a sloop, there we go, to occupy the port. Good morale bonuses here, across the board. New Spain, Iceland, Newfoundland, Northwest Atlantic. It's because... Mateys, my first wave of the pirate invasion, is ready. So you guys do a bit more recruiting. Let's go back to Americas, because I know in Newfoundland... We also have a handful of infantry. Whoops. Probably don't need any more than that. There we go. Just ferry them over. So I'm going to wait for this army to get to the port before I embark them. And then my fleet of ships are just going to... Uh, explode towards the British Isles. Florida was captured, which is pretty handy. That's not the focus. Um, yeah, the focuses are good. Right, till in turn. James Dampy is still making his way rapidly over to our front. Part of me wonders, if I can't make peace with them, or if I can't um, declare war on them, will they ever be able to declare war on me again? Because the AI doesn't normally treat with the pirates? I don't know. I don't know, it's providing more information, I think, to make me decide to not continue this campaign beyond the victory conditions.
otherwise things could get a bit messy. I mean, they might declare war on us. Well, now we've got a front line, which if they do, great. But I would expect I would have expected to have seen the Pueblo nations do that already as well, and they haven't. Good. Trinidad now has a has a uh, set of fortifications. Fleet arrives. Just deposit your guys in off, off the uh, coast of Iceland. Yes, you're. You don't need to. You don't need to have m um, movement just yet. Get the Floyds into Mervyn Edwardson because that's quite a valuable transatlantic trade route. So let's take take out my sloop because I need that. And then let's take out you guys. Take out this Jebek because I only want to get one guy embarked. Well, Henry Wall is there first. Let's actually send. Jebex forward. Oh, not all of them. Occupy Waterford. That will give us an attack route direct to Dublin, which is held by a force of cavalry and Irish volunteers. Then let's take another Jebex. Ideally, attack Glasgow. That's possible, which is great. Let's take another Jebek. Sail them towards Liverpool. The goal will be to occupy... which We can't occupy Bristol. We can already see there's a zone of control there. Sail you around to Newcastle. Got a force here in Scotland ready to respond to us. So let's send Floyd to hmm, uh, send a Floyd to raid north of England, north of Scotland, I should say, because we can now send a fleet. Well, first of all, sail into Waterford, deploy your army, and march up to Dublin. That's the move to make. We will be fighting that action. Oh, I definitely meant to click maintain siege. Just in, all right. Okay. Well, there we go. Stupid hands. Let's get involved. Um, a lot of cavalry. So I'm probably going to try and be a bit static at the start to try and weaken their mobile forces as much as possible. Yeah, especially as it's raining. Ah, ooh. Yeah. Let's let's hunker down. Tunker down. I was hoping. Not great. Not that it's a problem. I've got uh, another full army that can be deployed after this, should this go a bit funky. Three militia up on the high ground, two militia off to the left. Then my pirates. My buccaneers, they are all going to hold behind the line in the event of a cavalry charge. Try get the guns to focus on the enemy artillery, because their artillery is Six pound a horse, which we're not so worried about. Not that they can actually fire anyway. Let's just see what's going to happen. This is a lot of regiment of horse for a force that can't actually deploy square. Blast the seventh regiment with musket fire. Attack the regiment of horse. Send the first regiment in to attack the fourth. You've blasted the seventh canister shot, which is great. Musketry wise, you guys should be a bit concerned. Okay, so the buccaneers attack the regiment of horse. 
you men attack the 6th regiment of horse because we're now massing our buccaneers here to meet the charge so you guys should start to yeah you haven't lost many men actually This should be a good start at damaging their mounted forces, which will make their infantry that much more of a delightful, chewable force. I must say chewable, it sounds weird to describe it as. You guys switched around shot and start to attack the 7th Regiment of Horse. You guys have done a good number on the 4th Regiment, which is quite good. Push on and attack the 4th Regiment before they get to my guns. Militia form up. Pirates form up further along the flank. Okay, all of you. Sans Militia get behind the lines, get my Militia. Back to safety. My gunners are wavering, understandably, because I'm not going to really. There's not a lot I can, huge amount I can do to respond to that. They knocked out one of my gun teams, which is unfortunate, but not dangerous. It's not ideal, for sure. So then let's get you guys to attack the 8th to the rear. You men charge the 8th. You men charge the 8th as well. You men start to blast the 42nd Regiment of Foot. Surround and destroy the 8th. I'm not quite sure why you're fleeing. Turn around and attack the cavalry. Because between you, you will be enough. The important thing was always not to try and commit all my forces in one go. So it looks like my right flank's pretty secure. They've dispatched or sent their cavalry forward in packets to try and defeat us. They have bayonets. Just attack the infantry that's advancing towards our lines. There we go, the 8th Regiment starting to go down. Continue the attack. Okay, so get these two militia units back to the front, get my start to get my pirates now out more to the flank because we are aware that what we're going to start seeing is uh, we're going to start relying more on pirate units flanking and destroying individual units piecemeal. So you chaps can switch to canister shot and begin to try and blast the 42nd. So get these two units up high come down and hit the 11th in the flank. Okay, so you guys are going to start engaging the Irish volunteers already, in which case then some of my pirates can continue to push up the flank. So who are they going to hit? Doesn't look like they've made a choice yet, which means... It gives the first light for... Oh, who are they going to hit? First light foot involved. Okay, the 42nd. They wavered for a split second. So 
Let's pivot you guys against the 42nd. Focus your fire against the Irish volunteers, and then... No, you guys need to keep pushing around to hit them. You men pivot to support the engagement. You guys... Run the pirates up. You guys switch to canister shot. Okay, the critical thing is we've observed the enemy not firing by a rank. So you just surround and destroy the 31st Regiment of Foot. You guys get onto the flank of the infantry here. To be honest, the problem is they're not actually... You guys hit them with a round shot, otherwise you're not going to do enough damage. 31st are wavering uh, steady under the volley fire from the troops to the rear. Come on, break your scurvy dogs. Get back, you pirates. You guys get back to the rear. Jump onto the 11th. Allow us to try and pivot our efforts. To be honest, I may want to start to withdraw this flank slightly and maybe provide a militia unit to hit the 11th in the flank so that you guys can actually blast the Irish volunteers with round shot. Pirates down here as well. So we've hit the militia in the flank on so the eleventh is getting engulfed. Run pirate units forward to surround and attack the twenty fifth. The 11th have been steadied by the presence of their general. Commit the pirates forward. You are tying down too many units. You very much need your general to be defeated. You guys are running the wrong way. those volunteers to hit the Irish infantry there, get these pirates to commit against the volunteers on the right flank. Get my buccaneers to push aggressively. Get my militia to advance as well. Let's hope we can chew up the 25th regiment fairly quickly and start to mop up the flank. You guys might go to hit these, the troops in the centre. You guys have committed to get this militia unit back here. Volunteers going to push the right flank. So the 31st regiment, that's the one that was already beaten, is very upset. Get my general up here because I need to start trying to make units break and run. You guys are going to hit the 35th as well. Fold these militia units in into this combat here. 
because my buccaneers are holding, but I don't know how they're going to hold long they're going to hold for. You guys have engulfed the 25th. So push on to the 13th. We've made these Irish volunteer units, they've committed to the action, suffer the consequences significantly. My gun up here, switched to round shot, continue to engage the general's bodyguard. Get the pirates to withdraw. Get my infantry line to reform. Because we do have quite a good advantage here now. You men charge the 13th, you men charge the 13th from one flank, you another, you go after the general's bodyguard. You go straight in, you attack from one flank, you attack from the other, you go after the general with James Dampy himself. Enemy force on the flank has routed. You guys might charge into the rear of the 35th. Oh, my pirate units going after the general. So you guys... Oh, my artillery units going for the general. The one at the rear. So aim at the 8th instead. There we go. The 13th have been routed. So push on into the 42nd. These militia units can pivot to face off against the 21st. This unit, the 35th, have been surrounded and destroyed. So all of you sans the militia. You form up like so. These buccaneers don't really have a target anymore. Advance up the militia. There we go, cease fire the guns. My pirate general, actually that's the artillery back there isn't it? So my buccaneers get them back here, get my pirate general to mop up the first regiment of foot. Horse artillery, the 8th regiment are wavering. Yeah they've fallen under our musketry. Get the pirates running. They've broken. The gunners are still alive. It's all down to the presence, the stoicism of the 42nd, who have fallen. Ha <laughs> ha! First British territory has been liberated from their tyrannical rule, as long as my general doesn't die attacking the gunners. Especially he doesn't run back here into a defensive position. I believe. Ah, there's always one. Everyone just surround the 16th. Get my general back here. Speeding up time just because this is going to be fairly blunt in terms of strategy. My buccaneers don't want to get into position. James Dampy hit them in the rear. This might cause... Not James Dampy. I keep calling him James Dampy because it's my other general. There you go. The 16th are wavering. Capture the colours of Great Britain. There's my pirate lord. It's actually in green. I thought it was more black, but actually it's green. The 1st Regiment came back temporarily. Then swiftly broke. There we go. The first territory secured. And you can see how dodgy it was already. Just fighting against a fairly benign army. But there we go. Dublin is ours. Let's repair the government chambers. Let's replenish this army. We are going to want how it's a support. <laughs> we are going to want it. Um, but let's see how the AI responds to that challenge to their authority. 
immediately Galway is going to grow in one turn that's this chap here yeah to the west okay so now you guys yes, your Majesty. Awaiting get aboard your Jebek they are not Forward. going to deploy against Scotland yet they are going to deploy to the north You men will come back to pick up fresh recruits. Hold position. Pick up these guys as well next turn. As well as these guys when they're done. Actually, let's get some howitzers recruited fairly rapidly. I'm going to want to push down this tree quite quickly. Um... Especially to start to try and thin out some of these enemy units. I mean, all that artillery is quite nice. Sit in turn. James Dampy's hightailing it back towards his homeland. So we may lose all these ships immediately. Yeah, our Floyd's going to get attacked. Yeah, by a section, by a component of the Royal Navy. Yeah, it's not a very good army. The fleet is lost! Not a very good army at all. Although they're probably going to go around there and now attack every single individual Zebek we've got. We might pick them apart. Understandably, we never expected to stand one for one against the Royal Navy. I haven't killed a single thing. Fifth rate versus a Zebek. I like your odds. But we're still alive. Fallen back to Iceland. <laughs> These they don't know what we're gonna they don't know how to respond to us. But yeah, this is part this kind of shows you why I don't necessarily want to be exposed in the open sea with small fleets carrying large amounts of pirate uh, pirate troops because you can see it actually causes quite a significant amount of problems and it looks like the ottomans might be about to be up to the usual end turn shenanigans so i'm going to chop the recording here and bring you guys back um, once they've decided to make up their minds so see you in a second everyone obviously as soon as i turn the recording off things get fixed no hanover no peace and no cherokee no peace no Württemberg, no peace. Yeah, lots of stuff has been destroyed. New town emerges, Galway in Ireland. I'm fairly sure we are Protestant. Oh, we can't build a church school anyway, so craft workshops it is. Let's bring these troops into the fold and lots of fleet destroyed markers oh i meant to collect more men as well didn't i oh well let's take one of these jebex north to pick up jan jorgensen plus these mortars so we've got here two buccaneers and a militia unit so let's take one of these militia units and then just reinforce colonial militia militia oh interesting very well let's do the same thing with buccaneers though good and then let's take you guys and you guys good so that's freed up enough space and again, we're going to want to start churning out buccaneers and pirates. We can actually cross, but we're not going to do it until we've got mass. I definitely want two armies with preferably a strong contingent in Dublin all ready to go. So about 6,700 a turn. I think buccaneers might end up being the more useful commodity because they're the ones that, that might get the most damage. New port emerges in Puerto Cabello. Good stuff. Let's go up to Jamaica. Get your sleep over to Puerto Barrios. 
See, it's, you see, it says it's currently worth money to us, the trade route, but we're not trading with anyone. To be honest, we're getting to the point where I should... Actually, no, you're still making good money there. Fleet destroyed, fleet destroyed, fleet destroyed. Basic roads built. Let's take a small portion of our force north and advance against Savannah. Um, looking at the timer, I believe it's time to end the episode. So, thanks for watching guys, hope you've enjoyed and we'll see you next time as the pirates continue their advance into North America. Cheers everyone.